In this video, I'm going to explain the different types of counters that there are in my solitaire World War II war game, The Road Chosen. Broadly speaking, there are two types of counter. There are gameplay counters, such as special rules and things like that. And then there are unit counters, and it's the unit counters I'm going to mostly focus on in this video. The, broadly speaking, there are two types of unit counters, infantry type counters, so, for example, here we've got two US infantry counters here and a German U uh, infantry counter. And you can tell the infantry counters because they're square. Plus we have armoured fighting vehicles, which would include things like tanks, self-propelled guns. They are rectangular, so they're a, a fundamentally a different, a different shape and size. And in this example, we've got a Sherman and a, and a, and a, and a Tiger. <laughs> um, so they are broadly speaking the two types of counter types that there are for units. There are a lot of different counters within those categories. So for example, um, we've got an MG, a German MG42 counter here. It is technically still an infantry based counter. And we have a mortar counter here representing mortar teams. Again, it's basically it's based as an infantry type counter. Then in addition to that, we just look at the uh, armoured fighting vehicles for a minute. For example, on the Allied side, we've got a Firefly, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, a basically a Sherman-type chassis with an almighty gun. Um, and we have a Sherman 76 uh, counter here, which again is just a variant of the Sherman. It's got a slightly more powerful gun. Um, that you can use that we used in the game. Then for the German side, and they, these are all all exactly classed as the same in in the sense that they are um, armored fighting vehicle counters. And on the German side, for example, as well as the Tiger, we have um, a Panther, we have a Jagd, that's a Jagd Panther. We've got a Jagd Panzer, which is a different type of. Uh, a German tank destroyer, a Stug or Sturmgeschutz, which is a self propelled gun, and then we have a Panzer IV as well. So there are a, a variety of different type types of uh, armoured fighting vehicle counters in the game, and there are a variety of different infantry counters in the game. As you can see in that example, um, there's a lot more different types of German. AFVs than there are um, allied at the minute. I've got plans to do um, some more allied uh, AFE counters such as the M10 um, gun carriage. Then to counter the number, sheer number of tanks that the player might be encountering, um, the allied player also has an anti-tank counter and again that's an infantry based counter and we have an airborne counter for the US airborne as well. Um, in addition to the infantry counters that you see here, I'm going to be doing um, British and Commonwealth counters for both infantry and for airborne as well. Uh, so now we'll have a, a closer look actually at some of the contents of what the counters, the actual information that's on the counters. So in this example here, I've got the American airborne counter and each counter will have um, a variety of statistics that are orientated to combat and in addition they have a different colored border so the uh, allied border is dark green the german borders are gray um, i don't know if you can see on the camera there but there's a, a small allied symbol in the bottom right of the counter um, if we have a look at the sherman for example the allied symbols in the top left and that's consistent across all the counters it has the name of the counter so airborne and the first two numbers are um, orientated around the number of dice that you'll be rolling in combat. The first number being the number of dice you'll be rolling against a uh, infantry target. The second number, the number of dice you would be rolling against a armored fighting vehicle um, counter. And then the number at the bottom there is a saving throw that the counter may have. Um, different counters have different statistics. So for example, the, we compare that to the US infantry. Their stats are quite different. They, they are rolling two dice in combat, zero dice, so they cannot fight against an um, 
armoured fighting vehicle, um, and their saving throw is different. And the same is true for the for the Germans. So we've got MG42 compared to an infantry. The MG42 is rolling a lot more dice, as you would expect when fighting against infantry, for example. And then if we compare, let's pick a, a Sherman with the 75mm gun. So again, it uses the same format. Um, has the name of the uh, AFV. It's got two two numbers there. One is the number of dice against infantry targets. The second number is against um, other armored fighting vehicle targets, tanks such as. And then the bottom number is the um, saving throw. Some tanks. Let's pick a Panzer IV, which has got sort of similar stats, um, but the reverse. So the Panzer IV is rolling more dice when fighting against tanks less dice when fighting against um, infantry based um, targets um, but it also has a, a number underneath the tank dice of a one that's a modifier um, when fighting against um, armored fighting vehicles and I'll explain in a separate video how combat works and how those numbers pertain to combat so please check please check that out but you can see it's not a huge number uh, it's not a huge um, complexity to the counters um, I've tried very hard to keep the design as clean as possible so that the the, the counters don't have a huge number of uh, values on them um, and they all follow exactly the same format the format is a little different between infantry and um, armor but by and large it's the same so the numbers there for combat number at the bottom for combat as well for example um, but yeah just to give you some indication as to the actual counters themselves. Now in addition to the sort of infantry type counters or armoured fighting vehicle counters, you also have a variety of gameplay counters. Um, there's a variety of these for the game and they are to help the player. So for example, I'm not going to go through every single one, but when you take over an area or zone in the game, you control it as the allied player, you put a control counter on there. When you set the game up, there are some special rules for specific, specific zones. You'd put a special rule counter. Um, and if you, if as an allied player, you get cut off, and you're out of supplies, out of supply counter. And there's not too many of those in the game. Again, I've tried to keep those to an absolute minimum. Some of them are player aids. You don't, uh, for some of them, I did them just to help the player if they chose. So for example, we got a recon counter. And that's when you spend some command points to uh, recon a perspective area before you move into it. Um, I did that just to help players who particularly want to use a counter for that. You don't need to. Um, so yeah, a variety. But again, try to keep those to a minimum. Not a huge number of counters, uh, gameplay counters for the game required. So hopefully that gives you some indication. Um, a lot of people ask me how I mount my counters. Um, I'll probably do a separate video for actually showing you how I do them. But basically, these are... a cut them out and glue them to um, MDF uh, board. These are pre-cut war game uh, counters, mostly used for miniature games. Um, they come pre-cut, so you just cut your counters out and stick them down, um, very straightforward. And they give the counter a sort of a nice, sort of chunky feel. You can get different um, millimeter, different depths, so how chunky you want them to be. I know a lot of people use um, plastic counters from, from other games, but uh, that's how I do mine. As you can tell in the videos, I've made hundreds and hundreds of these sort of counters. So yeah, but hopefully that gives you an overview of the counters for the game.